Welcome back. I want to talk about something that's super, super important. We're going to be talking about rotation. My goal here is not to teach you everything about rotation, positioning, twos, threes, all that. Instead, it's to cover just the basics and a couple of key ideas you need to know. And if you are gold through champ ranked watching right now, my coaching program designed to take players like you up to GC in just six weeks or less is nearly sold out. So if you want to get involved before we sell out and go on pause, DM me on Discord with the keyword three, and we talk details about coaching. I'll have the link first thing in the description below. Otherwise, enjoy. So super quick, we're really only covering three topics in this video. First, we're going to cover first man, second man, third man, and the basics of positioning. Second, we'll cover something called ball side versus off ball rotation. And last, we'll wrap up with something you've probably heard a million times, back post. Before we can cover advanced rotations, we have to establish what rotation is actually made of. We use a continuously moving system called first man, second man, third man to identify rotations. Here's what it actually means. At any given time, you may be expected to play offense, defense, midfield, or something in between when you're playing. So this terminology is meant for you to help make sense of what's actually going on in your games. In 3v3, the first man is gonna be the man closest to the ball. This is the play in charge of challenging, contesting, or pushing the initiative and advancing the play forward. Behind the first man is going to be the second man. The second man is the second in line to hit the ball, usually covering the more aggressive option. This might be the person waiting for the center, right behind the first man waiting for a 50-50, or say you're on defense and first man's in the corner playing the ball. Second man might be front post or on the back wall. Third man then is the person furthest back in line. This person is in charge of covering the worst case scenario and is usually playing more cautious until somebody rotates behind them and they have the go ahead to push up. Now this is a very simplistic way of looking at the game. The main reason I bring this up is just for you to understand this simple idea. Regardless of what position you're playing, the main goal with positioning is to cover what your teammates cannot. And if you can't identify what position you're playing, you're just gonna be guessing at what you should actually do. So by looking around the field and taking in where your teammates are, you can identify whether you're first in line to hit the ball, second in line to hit the ball, or last person back and prioritize what you need to cover accordingly. At the lower ranks, you can generally view it as being a simple circle. At the start, you're first man. Your job is to play the ball, move the play forward, and when you're done and you've contributed you rotate back around and cover the back end. Then your third man, waiting for your first man and second man to push the initiative and for them to commit while covering worst case scenario. And once your first man does go, you move up to second man. Now you're waiting for the ball to come to you. If your first man is beat, you become first man and the cycle continues. Now that's very simplistic. Sometimes the ball will get booted over your first and second and all of a sudden as third man, now you got to play the ball on your first. But you can use this system, make comms with your teammates to at least get a base level understanding of rotation, reduce double commits, and push much more easily through the lower ranks. Second thing I want to talk about is on ball versus off ball rotation. At its core, on ball versus off ball just means what side of the field you're rotating back on. Let's say you're in the opponent's corner playing first man, you go for a center and the challenge finishes in their corner. What a lot of players would do wrong is double back and try to rotate back on the same side they entered. The problem is that you could create conflict with your teammates trying to move up while you're moving back. Instead, whenever possible, you wanna move in a circular rotation. So after you're done committing as first man in the front right corner, if you can move move across the field, pick up boost, maybe create chaos and create a demo and get back behind your team on the other side, your rotations will work more seamlessly and you'll have way less double commits and points of confusion with your team. Once again, this is not a catch all, but especially for you lower ranked players watching, you want to move in a circle and try to keep rotations on your team flowing in one direction. This holds basically all the way up to GC. This leads perfectly into the third topic I want to cover, which is of course back post versus front post. It's important to understand what side of the field the ball's on so you can understand what side you need to rotate back on. So if we're looking at the net and the ball's on the left, the front post is going to be the left post and the back post is going to be the right post. The simple mistake a lot of low rank players make is playing for where the ball is and not where it's going to be. And what this translates to in game, what a lot of low rank 
point players do is rotate near post closer to the ball because they think that will help them play it. Then when they try to defend their net and make a save, they realize the net is behind their car and things get really awkward. Instead, you want to make it a rule of thumb to nearly always rotate off the ball across the field and through your back post. Not only is this usually more efficient with your boost, but it also ensures the net stays in front of you. One of the most important things for making defense easier. An added bonus is when you rotate back post, you could also cover your backboard better. And especially for lower rank players, rotate back post and your life's going to be so much easier. Hopefully this stuff isn't too controversial. Like I say, it doesn't cover everything, but these are the basics of rotation that we all need to understand. That way we can move on to the more situational high level stuff. Now that we've covered this rotation housekeeping, feel free to rewatch if anything didn't land initially. Thanks for watching.